All right, let's learn about free body diagrams and let's use free body diagrams to model how forces act on objects. Let's say you're pushing this couch. Well, objects move because of forces, but there's more that meets the eye. There's the friction from the carpet, those two surfaces touching. There's gravity. The earth is pulling that couch downward towards the center of the earth. And there's also the ground floor. That couch is not colliding through the second floor of the first floor into the basement. That couch is being supported by the floor. So there must be some force um, balancing the force of gravity. And there's also the applied force. That's just these guys pushing. We call that the applied force. So say you want to draw the forces. Here's Frankie. He's looking at this book. He wants to draw the forces on this book. So he draws a free body diagram. And this is what it looks like. This F sub G, that's the symbol for the force due to gravity or the gravitational force. Fn, this guy, that's the symbol for the normal force. And the normal force, that's that support force exerted upon an object that is in, in, that is in contact with another stable object. So the support force, uh, f like a table or anything, like right now if you're sitting in a chair, that chair is applying a normal force to you. And normal just means perpendicular. So that means there's a 90 degree angle between the normal force, let me draw it in green, and the surface, which is the table. You see that 90 degree angle. Normal just means perpendicular. Oh, these are free body diagrams. So you didn't even need to draw the book. You can just make a little dot wherever, wherever the center of mass is um, on that book. So there's different types of forces, that applied force, a push and a pull, we call it a contact force because the, the, you know, that person is touching that, that desk. Um, there's a, the force of friction, and that's another contact force. You can see how we write it, F sub, you know, F or fricked. And look at how these surfaces are not even or smooth, and that's how we get the force of friction. They're going to be pushing on each other like that. A skydiver is going to feel the force of air resistance. We write that F sub AR because they are falling and they're coming into contact with all the oxygen, all the nitrogen, all those air molecules. And that those air molecules are pushing that skydiver back up. But of course, that skydiver is falling down because they feel the force due to gravity. It's a non-contact force. If you have mass, the Earth has mass, you're going to attract one another. That's the force due to gravity. We got tension force, that's a force exerted through strings, ropes, chains, things like that, F sub T. We've got the normal force, which we talked about before, which we talked about before, see those right angles there? That's the surface of that slide pushing up on those kiddos. And then we've got lastly the spring force, F sub S, you know, if a string stretched, it's gonna pull something back, or if it's compressed, it's gonna push it back the other way. All right, moving along. We've got the magnetic force and the electric force. The north and south pole of a magnet will attract, or the protons and the electrons in an, in an atom will attract. Those are two non-contact forces because um, they actually don't, those, those things don't need to be touching each other, just like gravity, to feel those forces. Say you have a uh, crane lifting one of those steel beams. And I want to mod, I want to draw a free body diagram on the, the steel beam. It might look like that. Force is measured in Newtons. Force is measured in Newtons. So that crane is pulling on that steel beam with a force of 10,000 Newtons up and gravity, the weight is pulling down on that steel beam by 8,000 newtons. That's the weight. And that's the same thing as the force due to gravity. So here it is here, a little bit zoomed in. The length of the force vector shows the magnitude of force, meaning the amount. So the longer the vector arrow, the more force, the more force. And if there's an imbalance, which you can see there's an imbalance, 10,000 up, 8,000 down, we call that the net force. We call that the net force. Net just means sum. So you sum, you make a little addition. 10,000 up, 8,000 down, you're left over with 2,000 up. So that's our net force. And so we can pretty simply calculate that net force just like that. It's the amount of imbalance. And that'll tell us that something's going to um, accelerate. 
clear the selection. If it feels a net force, it's going to move. It's going to change its velocity. It's going to move from rest. It will have some sort of acceleration if it has a net force. You can write it in several different ways. Net force can be written net force F sub net or this little backwards three looking thing. That's sigma. That's the Greek symbol for the sum. Remember this guy? This is Newton, Sir Isaac Newton. And here's his first law. He said something like this. He said, an object with a constant velocity will stay at a constant velocity. An object at rest will stay at rest. Uh, unless it feels a net external force. So if I apply a net force, that means there's a, an imbalance and this pen's going to move. It'll feel an acceleration and external meaning it's me. I'm external to this pen. You can't move things with an internal force. Have you ever sat in a car and pushed on the dashboard? It doesn't actually move the car at all. That's because that's an internal force. So the last thing, take a look at this free body diagram, this diagram of the forces on this box. It's a box that is being pushed across a carpet and you can see how the forces are being modeled or shown um, in a free body diagram. So try to answer these questions about free body diagrams and good luck.